Delilah, your hunger strike ended back in 2016 after the, promise, uh, the province promised its dam would minimize risks to traditional food sources. What do you make of that promise today? Um, I've recently, well, not recently, since 2016, not long after the hunger strike ended, felt very betray betrayed and still do. I'm very heartbroken that our food source is still going to be contaminated and our culture and traditions are still going to be affected despite their promises. And so assuming the flooding of the, the reservoir goes ahead, what will that mean for your communities harvesting of fish, seal, and, and other country foods? Will, will they continue to, to, to harvest from Lake Melville? What, what are people telling you? Um, I don't think there's a choice. Uh, the flooding has already began, and uh, my family personally, they don't really have a choice in whether they can or cannot um, harvest you know, our traditional foods. They rely heavily on survival uh, through traditional foods and our traditional way of life. And, and what are their thoughts in terms of what will happen to, to, the, to, the, to the quality, to the integrity of those country food sources? Um, well, during our hunger strike, uh, I learned a lot. I learned a lot about the scientific side of things. Mm. Um, I initially joined because I saw that it was affecting my family. Um, I also saw that it meant, it, it was a spiritual thing for me too, to reconnect with my land and my family, but I learned so much about the scientific side of things with the bioaccumulation of methylmercury and that's something that was shared with, you know, my family and the general public and, you know, Inuit, Inu and Southern Inuit and settlers alike, um, that these food sources will be contaminated. It's, you know, the, the research is there and it's not the first time that this has happened. And, and what is the, the, the main concern in terms of what methylmercury could do if it builds up in, in people's bodies? Um, there are so many different things from uh, neurological diseases. Um, in children, there could be birth defects or uh, slowed, uh, slowed development, as well as death even. Um, there are people in Grassy Narrows who are experiencing the very real effects of mercury poisoning, and it's, it's seen there, uh, yeah. So, where do things go from here in your mind? I'm very proud of Nunatsiava government for not accepting the $10 million uh, out of the $30 million that the Inu Nation and Nunatugavut uh, Community Council did accept their uh, third of the $30 million. Um, I'm very proud of that. Uh, I'm not sure what's next. Uh, I know there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of concern uh, back in my community and along the coast. Um, it's a uh, it's very un not uncertain time because we know what methylmercury will do. We know how bioaccumulation bio works. Um, it's, it's still just uh, instilling a lot of fear and concern in people and um, I guess we have to wait and see how this is going to affect the health of Inuit Inu and Southern Inuit. Well, Delilah Saunders, I know today's a difficult day for you. I appreciate you making time. Thank you so much, Rick.